Yes, do go in. Uh, won't you sit down? An unexpected pleasure. Unexpected? Yes, I didn't think I'd see you before the next committee meeting. Has something new turned up? Dr. Fleming, the appointment of the medical superintendent of the new child welfare centre will be decided at the next meeting. Yes? You are one of the three candidates for that position. Well? I have come today to suggest that you withdraw. Withdraw? You're joking. Oh, no, I'm not, after what happened yesterday. <laughs> oh, you're referring, no doubt, uh, to what happened at your son's birthday party. Rather to your son's behaviour at my son's party. To be precise, the name your Tony called my Cyril. Oh, well, we, we don't want to take any notice of that. You know, after all, he only called him a fat... I know what he called him. And for a boy of eight to even know the existence of such a word, it, it's deplorable. I expect he heard it somewhere. He's no idea of its meaning. What I term a, a paratism. Term it what you like. If you can't safeguard your own son's moral health, how can you hope to protect the youth of England? I've already spoken very sharply to Tony. It won't occur again. I've stopped his pocket money. Oh, do put that thing down. You'll only jab yourself. What he needs is a thrashing. My wife disapproves of corporal punishment. She doesn't believe in retarded self-expression. Oh, your wife. I gather she also practices as, as a psychiatrist. My wife is a qualified psychiatrist. She holds very advanced views, no doubt. My wife's views are her own, not necessarily mine. Your son's gift for self-expression might derive itself from her, might it not? It might. You're not sure. You know, Doctor, in the national movement, such as the welfare of our children, we have to be sure. We want a young England clean in mind and body. And when I think of your son and, and you, Dr. Fleming, as medical superintendent... Whatever happens, I shall not withdraw my application. Well, I shall oppose it. What is that noise? That's my baby clinic. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have 15 stomach aches in there. Stomach aches? Well, we all get them. Oh! oh. Suffering cats. That drawing! I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I, I trust you'll believe that I hadn't the least idea. That horse was drawn by your Tony, wasn't it? I, I'm afraid it was. It, he uh, has a gift for drawing. A gift? Is that what you call it? Kindly allow me to leave. Yes, of course. I need hardly tell you how sorry I am. You need hardly tell me anything. Claire. Yes, it's coming. Doctor's nice, isn't he? Oh. Hello, sweetie. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. One of Mrs. Fleming's patients, no doubt. Come in, Mr. Tim. Doctor busy? Yes, surgery. Mrs. Fleming won't be long, though. Have I'm not being a nuisance? You're never a nuisance, Mr. Tim. <laughs> Old sauce box, aren't you? <laughs> Madam's only gone to Paddington to see Master Tony off to school. Half term, you know. Well, I can't wait long. I've left her mother and sister in a shop. Ah, there's a lot of work before a wedding, sir. <laughs> Thinks if he puts it up there, I won't find it. You long to go, sir? I long to go what? Before the wedding. Oh, three days, 18 hours, and uh, 48 minutes. Bit of a strain, eh? Yes. Like a nice cup of tea? Oh, no, don't bother. Drop a scotch? I really oughtn't to wait. Oh, make up your mind. That wasn't me, it was my conscience. Oh, I don't believe in them things. Don't you smash that now? Doctor likes to play with it after surgery. Say when. Why? There. That's all you're going to get. Ah, oh, thank you, Smithy. I needed this. I think you'll make a nice father. Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> oh, Smithy, have a heart. Remember, there's many a true word spoken. <laughs> oh, look at you. I bet you'll have heaps of kids. Dozens of them. Bless their innocent little hearts. Take Master Tony now. He was all right till they sent him away to school. What a child like that needs is its parents. <gasps> yes, madam. Hello, Jimmy, darling. Hello. Smithy, be a pet. Pay the taxi. Haven't got any change. Well, bridegroom, 
How's my young sister coping with the truce? Oh, she's all right. I'm the victim. All I have to do is look on. <laughs> well, that earns you a drink. I cannot tell a lie. I've had one. You'll have another. Doctor. No, sir? No. How's my mama? Oh, she's in great shape. How mothers rise to a wedding? Like a war horse to a bugle. You've got premarital depression, Timmy. You must take more exercise, less alcohol. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Cheers. You must guard against apprehension complex. You're rather the type for one, you know. Oh, rats you and your old complexes. How long have you been married, Claire? Nine years. You should remember. You are happy, aren't you? Of course I'm happy. Marriage is the ideal state. It's complete, logical. You'll get to feel that way in time. You know, I sometimes wonder why I didn't beat old Howard to it with you. <laughs> so does Howard. With men, sense of security is fatal. Keep them guessing. It's woman's only hope. Children are the real problem. Timmy, if your first child's a boy, for heaven's sake, let him be a boy. Don't try to turn him into a cowed little animal. Uh-huh. Tony again? Yes. He's been home for the weekend. He's so clever, and Howard doesn't even begin to understand him. I will not have my son put into a psychological straitjacket. He's a reasoning human being, not a performing seal. <laughs> Better get you down, old girl. Worst things happen. Tony will make out. Dear Tim, why didn't I marry you? Tony would have adored you. You'd be more his mental age. One I ought to be awfully pleased about that. <laughs> oh, gosh, half past five. Jen will wonder where I am. And your mother. Have you ever met your mother? Oh. Fine, child. Chin up. Square your shoulders. Every girl should go to her marriage with the light of victory in her eyes. And, and how can madam possibly fit you if you're all angles and bends? I'm sure we should have had godes. What I say about godes is that well, there, there, there's nothing quite like them. It would be quite wrong with this outfit. The whole effect would be outre in the extreme. I don't agree with you. A go day here and a go day there would break the monotony. Monotony? Well, I've never had that said about my designs. Scandalous, perhaps, but monotonous, never. No breath of scandal has ever touched my family. And it's not going to begin now. Perhaps you would like to complete the fitting, Mrs. Parsons. If there were more time, I would. Mummy, darling, I'm wearing the dress, not you. Be quiet, Joe. Mummy knows best. This is a country wedding, madam. I keep telling you. You do indeed. And a country wedding demands a certain air of respectability. And in my opinion, there is nothing so respectable as go days. Now, couldn't we have just one little go day? Once and for all, no. Well, if the fashion editor of Tittle Tattle writes a bad notice of it, you'll be to blame. I must remind you that it's already past our closing time. Oh, dear. What's the matter, darling? Pins? No, 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 no. I it's Tim. He hasn't come back. Oh, nonsense. He's probably at his tailor's. Bridegrooms have their dress problems, too. Yes, but he said he'd be back by half past five. Well, he's probably at a steer party, dear. Stag party, darling. Oh, yes, yes, of course. How foolish of me. Now we'd like to see the wedding dress, if you please, madam. Very well. Marty, fetch the wedding dress. I've had one or two ideas about that wedding dress. Now, I think, Parsons, please leave everything to me. After all, that's what I'm here for. Well, I should have more confidence if we'd seen eye to eye over the goodies. Now, darling, mm. I think that a little more... He's on the last of his national health now. Adenoids. <laughs> Is there no other place but the floor for this rubbish? Oh, dear. Why not it is? Now, look here, Claire. Matters are getting serious. Have you seen that thing in the hall? What thing? Tony's gone, I suppose. Yes. I saw him off on the 510. Pity. I'd have liked a word with him. Why? He's drawn a horse. In a sweepstake? Oh, how wonderful. Tony's drawn a horse on the wall opposite my consulting room door. Well, darling, what of it? After all, there's only one kind of a horse. Unfortunately, there are two. Go and take a look at it. Well? I think it's very funny. And clever, too, I suppose. Yes, and clever. After all, you must admit he can draw. <laughs> oh, darling, why don't you try to laugh about things like this? It's part of the fun of being a parent. Fun? Yes, fun. There are amusing things in life apart from gallstones. Such as allowing one's son to scribble things on walls. It's a very clever sketch of a horse. It is a pity he drew it there. He did it because I objected to his language. To what he called Mrs. Carey Brown's little boy. 
Little boy? Oh, great toad. Tony drew that horse out of revenge, hoping my patients would see it, hoping they'd think that I'd done it. Darling, for goodness sake, don't give way to persecution mania. We'll have it all cleaned up. It's an indelible pencil. It's the child's mind that wants cleaning up. What do you mean? Did you look at it properly? Yes, I did. It's realistic. It's a horse as he sees it. As he ought not to see it. I tell you, his mind wants cleaning up. Are you quite sure you don't mean your own mind? My mind? Yes. There must be something the matter with it to make such a fuss about a child's drawing. Well, I... And I refuse to quarrel with you, Howard, much as I know you'd like to. Claire! You can't dismiss the whole thing like this! Claire! I'm going to have a bath. <coughs> Not until we flash this matter out. Oh, don't be absurd. Making such a fuss about a child's natural, simple acceptance of the truth as he sees it. Natural and simple, my foot. Besides, it's biologically correct. He wasn't thinking of biology. I suppose you know best what he was thinking about then. Well, I only know that if you go on as you're doing, you'll have him in the juvenile police court, and we shall have probation officers and our private lives. Mine can stand it. And mine certainly can. What are you worrying about then? <laughs> Uh, let's try for once to discuss Tony without getting scratchy. I'm not scratchy. I don't find your neurosis in the least infectious. All right, all right, I give in. It's been one of those days. I know. It's been one for me, too. One of my schizophrenics is missing from home, and that old kleptomaniac I've been treating for years has gone and got three months for shoplifting. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, let's forget it and settle down for a nice, quiet evening, shall we? <laughs> That's right. Uh, after all, I don't suppose we're the first couple to breed a Jekyll and Hyde. You being such a Jekyll and I, Mrs. Hyde? No, no, I, I didn't mean that exactly. I was just thinking... Yes, dear. Go on. Oh, no, it's, it's nothing. A cigarette? No, thank you. I'm interested in this Jekyll and Hyde theory. Go on, Howard. No, I just thought that your total disregard for the things that matter, which I adore in you, should be so horrible when it shows in Tony. That's all. I mean. oh. Glad that's all, do you? Oh, oh, well, nice to relax. I just had a hectic row with Mrs. Carrie Brown over what Tony called her son. Darling, please, not again. Well, anyway, I've lost a child welfare job. I'm delighted to hear it. What children need is psychology, not centipods. Indeed. Don't worry, they'll come back to you. They may find a better doctor, but they'll never find anybody with a more charming bedside manner. Thank you. It's quite right, darling. It's been you can't always cart a bed round with you. I built up my practice on ability, not on tricks. All right. Don't bristle. Nobody's attacking you. I said ability. I'd appreciate some of it in my own household, especially in the upbringing of my son. You have a heaven-sent genius for variations on a worn-out theme. You should have been a musician. If you must know, I'm ashamed of Tony. I don't know what he's going to do next to upset my practice. Why doesn't he behave like the other children in the neighborhood? Well-bred, healthy. No son of mine is going to be bullied into a standard pattern till he's got about as much individuality as a wooden soldier. I'm sick and tired of your attempts to turn a sensitive, intelligent child into a football-kicking little aborigine. I'm sick and tired of this lifelong battle. It isn't a home, it's an arena. If that's how you feel about it, there's an obvious remedy. Well, why don't you take it? Very well, if that's what you want, I will. The sooner the better. Well, that's fine. Now we both know where we are. Yes, it's a great relief. And what do you imagine you're going to do? Give you grounds for a divorce? If you leave me, I shan't take you back. Take me back? You couldn't drag me back. That's what you say now. That's what I shall continue to say. This is the end of a very long pain in the neck. <laughs> Mr. Bowles, you're working late tonight, aren't you? Just doing a little overtime, ma'am. <laughs> How's the cottage getting on? Oh, fine, ma'am. We've got all the thatch on. We'll be whitewashing her tomorrow. Well, you will have it ready for after the honeymoon, won't you? We mustn't disappoint the happy pair. Oh, she'll be ready by then. Oh, well, we shan't be working Thursday morning, though. We're wanted for the bell ringing at the wedding. Oh. <laughs> Thank you tomorrow, Richard. I do think Daddy's a darling giving us the cottage, don't you? That's the only reason I'm marrying you, my sweet. I'm tired of sleeping on the embankment. Oh, idiot. Grace. Molly, I say, Molly. What is it, Papa? I've got it. I've got the 330 winner at Hurst Park. Half a crown each, wear eight to one. Darling, please don't bring your racehorses in here when I have all these wedding arrangements to come. I thought you'd like to know, that's all. I've no use for these larded darn weddings. Something always goes wrong. Now, when I got married, I swiped my girl right under her father's nose. Drove her away in a horse tandem and he followed in his butcher's garden. He was as mad as a hornet. Tried to kill me with a shotgun. Papa, please. 
There's a deal too much fiddly dee about weddings. Oh, okay. A couple of youngsters want to get together, we'll I let them get dear, together. Don't and don't we... make it a cross between Mafeking Night and Derby Day. Oh, goodness gracious. The girls all ready. The train must be early. Grace, Grace, where are you? Oh, there you are, the front door. I'm always something. Oh, here you are. Hello. Did you have a good journey? Oh, hello. 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 And what happened to you in London this afternoon? I, um, I felt a bit in the way, all those fittings and things. I went and had a drink. Oh, that sounds so like my husband. The slightest sign of activity and he feels thirsty. <laughs> Will you excuse me, Tim? I must go and see that those girls are all right. Of course. <laughs> William old rascal? Look at this. A thousand and one cocktails. <laughs> I found it in Alfred's bookcase. You try one. This is called radioactivity. Now, you taste that. Hey, I said taste it. Very good. <coughs> Serve you right. What a swallow. <laughs> it reminds me of Kevin Alfred. Good evening, Grace. Oh, good evening, sir. Been running? No, sir. The young ladies have arrived. We're a bit busy. There's always a lot of fuss before a wedding. Yes, sir. Women enjoy it. Well, Tim, my boy, how are you feeling? Fine, thank you, sir. Now what are you up to? Tim wanted a drink. Well, give him one. Yes. All right, I'll give it. I think you like this, Sherry. Alfred. Yes? I think uh, I'd like a drink, too. By all means, Dad. You know where to find the barley water? <laughs> Thanks. He can join you. Splendid. Although, between ourselves, I dropped in the Crown for a quick one on the way up to the station. Out of bounds, you know. Yeah. It's not bad. Mm. Tastes better at the Crown, though. Forbidden fruit, eh, sir? Uh, there's a bit of the rebel in the mildest of us. Yes, I'm afraid there is. And marriage is apt to bring it out sooner or later. <laughs> Oh, there you are, Alfred. You're rather late, dear. What train did you catch? The usual, my dear. Old habits cling. Well, you've taken rather a long time, haven't you? Greatly daring, my love. I called in at the Crown on the way up. Oh, is that wise, dear? <laughs> it was refreshing. <laughs> Let's go into the garden. Yes, dear, I know, but uh, I think it was a mistake. You know, Alfred, everybody here knows that I'm Commandant of the Girl Guides, and oh, please yourself, of course, but it does make me look rather foolish. Especially just before the wedding. You could never look foolish. You're a marvelous woman. <laughs> anyway, what does it matter what I do? You're the mainspring of the family. Of course it matters, Alfred. And if you're going to take high office in the near future, it's most important. Oh, we don't I know, Molly. So what do you... know, dear. We know that in three years' time, D.V., Alfred will be Lord Mayor of London. Hmm? Will he? <laughs> I don't mind your knowing because you're practically one of the family. But you do see, don't you, that the slightest breath of suspicion the slightest hint of anything not quite yeah. nice would be fatal, absolutely fatal. It's a very solemn thought. It is a solemn thought. That's what I told Alfred. And that's why I'm so thankful that our two girls are safely over the rapids and into harbour. You and Joan, Claire and Howard, dear Howard, so respectable and such a nice practice. Les enfants défense de parler. Oh, come along, children. Right, and okay. each of you have a nice tomato juice, such a nice healthy drink. Oh, Mummy. They're going to have a drop of sherry and like it. Oh, yeah. sure. Oh, no, I don't think so. Of course you will. Oh, thank you very much. Joan? Anne? Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, Susan? <laughs> Molly, dear, you're gone. No, no, yeah. Yes, come along. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, as you insist on my having a second glass of sherry, I'll give you a toast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Joan and Tim, their future happiness. May their marriage be as perfect as Claire's and Howard's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joan, Joan and Tim. Tim. Gracious, a visitor. Oh, that'll be Mr. Smilly about the hymns. Uh, he, he'll take ginger wine. Hello, Grace. Good evening, madam. Hello, everybody. Oh, nice to see you, dear. We didn't expect you. Yes, it is a bit sudden. Oh, hello, kid. Hello. Hello, hello, darling. Girl. Hello, Tim. Hello. Hello, you wicked old man. Hello, Claire. Barley water. Oh. <laughs> hello, Joan. You're looking wonderful. You feeling excited? Well, sort of. <laughs> She's nervous. Nervous? You flatter yourself. <laughs> Give me a gin and French, darling. I need one. This is quite reasonable, Sherry. Gin and French, please. Large one. <gasps> so you got back all right. Lost sheep returned. How did you know we lost him? I went round to Claire's for a drink. Oh, how nice. We wondered. Are you staying the night, dear? 
Yes, if you don't mind. I'm delighted to have you, Giles. Several nights, I'm afraid. Hope that's how you like it. Oh, thank you. Well, here's how. Hmm. I needed that. Is anything the matter, dear? Yes, in a way. You see, I've left Howard. Left Howard? Do you mean left him? Yes. Claire, what sort of nonsense is this? Don't take any notice. It's some silly joke. If it is, it's on me. Uh, you're not well, dear. I, I can see that. I'm perfectly well, thank you. Oh, you look as if you're running a temperature. Uh, there's been a lot of this one-day flu about. We'll get a doctor for you. A doctor? That's all I need. <laughs> uh, uh, come along, dear. We'll go upstairs and talk it over. But to say it all happened over two and you're drawing a horse is preposterous. Boys well, will draw on walls. When he's here, he draws on the garage wall. Horses? No, dear, of course not. Cars. Well, that limits him quite a bit. And, darling, if you could stop prowling up and down. Well, of course, there is something about Tony's drawing. I've always said it. Even cars. He contrives to make more like cars than, uh, well, cars. We needn't go into the artistic merits of the matter. It's Howard's insufferable attitude that's at the bottom of all this. Doctors are like that. They have to be always right, or no one would have enough faith in them to get well. You ought to know that. Well, let him be always right on his own. You've had rows about Tony before. You could have gone on having them in your own place, just between yourselves, to come here and inundate the whole family like a... like a burst water main. And at a time like this, I do think it's inconsiderate, just before the wedding. I'm sorry. What about me? Well, it's not your wedding, darling. Not my wedding. I'm the bride's mother. Yes, I forgot. Your crowning triumph, the last of your fledglings safely airborne. Well, if I'm spoiling all that, I'm sorry. It isn't as if Tony was a new bone of contention. You've been gnawing him between you for years. Molly, they're beginning to wander downstairs. I knew that would happen. We must issue a statement. Darling, you sound like a politician. Tell me, Claire, how serious is all this? We've broken up for keeps, that's all. But why? Why? Because of some row over Tony. Howard quite rightly objects to Claire's way of bringing him up. You know, I think you're wrong, Molly. Claire's very sensible with him. Oh, if there is any sense in his upbringing, it comes from Howard. Please don't let a trifle like the wreck of my marriage spoil everything here. I'll go. Go? Where? She'll go back to Howard and apologize, and you'll take her. I don't think so. You see, as Howard found so much to object to in my son, I promise to give him grounds for a divorce, which I shall. Alfred, what are we going to do? A bombshell like this in the family, and at a time like this. I don't think we should interfere. You're not going to interfere. You're going to take her back. Oh, such nonsense. Please. No, madam. Oh, well, I'll you in a minute. Oh, hey, you leave that alone, my girl. Really? The pa? You just keep your hooks off it, that's all. What's all this bust up between Clara and Howard, eh? Nothing at all, darling. Don't you worry about it. Worry about it? Why shouldn't I worry about it? Clara's a fine girl, and Howard's a poop. Pa? He told me years ago that if I didn't give up alcohol, I'd be dead in six months. And look at the answer. <laughs> He's a poop. And if Claire's left him, I should go out to town and tell him so. I've just been telling Grace he's a poop. You haven't. I have. And I told her how he bullies my great-grandson. But he can't scare Tony. No. Claire won't let him. Grace said it's a shame the way married couples are splitting up nowadays. Didn't you, Grace? Psst, wait. It's strange. He was here a minute ago. She's probably telling Cook. Now it'll be all over the village. Oh, I do think it's too bad of you. We shall have Joan going to the altar under a cloud. In future, kindly don't talk to the servants. Cheerio, Molly. But, darling, when I left you at the dressmaker's, I hadn't the least idea where I was going. No, oh, darling, it's not that I mind you going to Claire's. It's just that I wish you'd tell me. But, Peter, I... Oh, look, darling, forget it. There's nothing to make a thing about. Now, could you pray? Aunt Emma sent it. Oh, hang on, Emma. I was only going to say I couldn't very well bust in on you in the fitting room when you were being all pinned up. Darling, you ought to know that you can bust in anywhere that I am. I just love you, that's all. <laughs> Time's getting short now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Can you hear the clanking of the chains? Yes, I love it. 
That's what you're saying now. Tim, this thing of Claire's, it, it doesn't worry you, does it? Worry me? Of course not. Heart's a bit pompous, that's all. Claire's just Claire. Every bond is crap. We won't, will we? Not much. <laughs> there you are. How's the garden looking? Or is it too dark? Everything in the garden's lovely. I hope every flower in the greenhouse will burst into bloom on your wedding day. <laughs> Spontaneous combustion. Now then, everybody, places. Quickly, girls, help me. Oh, oh, you're there, Bazaar. Oh, I'm hungry. Taxi. It'll be Howard. I know he's come for Claire. <laughs> Welcome, you're just in time. Oh, it's Mr. Smithy. Good evening, Mrs. Parsons. Uh, oh, good evening, Mr. Smilly. Do come in, won't you? Uh, Tim, Joan, this is Mr. Smilly. He's come about the hymns. We must decide on that second one. The printers are waiting. We mustn't have any suggestion of stock press, must we? I know. Oh, perfect love. Everybody has that one. That's fine. Oh, I don't know. I, I wanted something different. How about fight the good fight? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. What time is it? Quarter past seven, sir. Time you was awake. Can I run your bath, sir? No, no, I'll do that. I brought the two cups, sir. <laughs> Not knowing. You're, you're quite right. And it'll just be breakfast for the one, sir? Yes. Just for one. Yes, sir. Never mind, eh? <laughs> Good morning, madam. Good morning, Grace. It's a lovely morning. Yes, I know. I've been awake for hours. Too bad the doctor isn't with you. He likes these country mornings. Why didn't you bring him? You know why perfectly well, Grace. You've been eavesdropping from the moment I arrived. I only heard a word or two here and there. Accidental, of course. Then you should have some advice about your ears. Otherwise, they'll never live up to your nose. Thank you. Doctor? Doctor, come along in. Your kidneys have been ruined. What do you mean? Kidneys. Oh, those kidneys, I see. Yeah. Oh, we don't often get them, you know. Did I have a telephone? No, sir. All quiet, as they say. I see in the paper, sir, there was a lot more divorces this year. Indeed. Yes, funny, isn't it? Very funny. Now, you won't let it get cold, sir, will you? Let what get cold? Your breakfast. I'll, I'll help myself. I spit in there by Mrs. Carey Brown. It's called The Child and It's Doctor. Shall I find it for no, you? No, no, thank you. I can manage. Please leave me alone, Smithy. Aren't you going to eat anything? I'm not hungry. I shall have to give it to the bell. Well, that's what I say to Master Tony. <laughs> Uh, Why don't you ring Madam up? Where? Why, at the battlements, of course. Where else? Her last remarks on leaving here did not suggest that she was going home. Quite the reverse, in fact. I don't care what you do, darling, but you must do something. I intend to. Oh, what? Give Howard cause for divorce. I thought I'd made that clear. But you can't do that right in the middle of Joan's wedding. And what about your father? The City of London is not going to deprive itself of its next Lord Mayor but three for anything I may do. I do wish you wouldn't be so practical. I thought that was a good thing. We mustn't become more inhibited than we are, must we? Howard will take Tony. You realize that? <laughs> you wouldn't have him as a gift. It's because of Tony I intend to go through with this. I must have a free hand with him. But Tony is Howard's child, too. He's got dozens more what? in his clinics. Oh. Claire. Oh. Here's a wire, sir. Oh, hey. No reply. No, Smithy. It's not from the missus. Then. Tony's headmaster. Dr. Bletchley will be calling at 10.30. I hope he won't discuss the incipience of poliomyelitis in the infant groups. I should hope not. 
not indeed. <laughs> Fine. Well, I'm just off to the hospital. I'll be back. Suppose there should be word from Madam, sir. We're prepared to receive messages. Give her a ring now, sir. No time like the present. Well, I don't see why I should. Here, hold this. Good morning. Oh, good morning, darling. You are late. Such a lovely morning. Only one teeny weeny cloud. All we want now is for you to go back to Howard. Yes, dear. You mean you're going? I mean that's all we want now. Oh. <laughs> you could go up to town with Daddy. How happy it would make Howard if you just walked in on him and said, Howard, darling, I'm so sorry. It would be such a nice gesture. Yes, dear. It would be a very nice gesture. You could get a taxi at Charing Cross. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Howard. How are you, dear? Speak up, Howard. There's a buzzing. Buzzing? Well, you must admit I have something to fuss about. No, no, dear. Buzzing. Buzzing. B-U-S-C. Oh, buzzing. Hello? Hello? Oh, curse that row. Hello? Hello? H hello, Howard. Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, of course. Uh, yes, she's here. Yeah, we're all at breakfast. We were just discussing her coming up with Alfred. He could put her into a taxi at Charing Cross. Give it to and me, Mother. <laughs> Claire's just here. She wants to apologize. Please, and to tell you... Hello, Howard. I think it's about time we stopped this nonsense and you came home. Well, I'm thinking it over. I, I mean, the situation needs serious thought. You're quite sure you're capable of it? Oh, yes, thank you. Quite capable. It's surprising after some of your recent remarks. Well, if you recall our conversation, you'll find you said as much as I did. With the possible difference that my observations were made within the bounds of common sense, whereas you completely overstepped the mark. Overstepped what mark? Well, never mind about that. I just want you to know that I, I meant what I said. But so did I. I mean every word of it. Very well. You'd better come back and discuss it. No, thank you. If there's anything to discuss, it can be done through our solicitors. No, don't worry. I shall enjoy every moment of it. Yes, so do I. I feel life's just beginning. Hello. Oh, blaze it. Everything all right, sir? Well, if you must know, everything is catastrophic. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Hmm. Sorry, sir. Who started tennis drawing, anyway? Nobody started him. He's always done it. He's drawn since he was two. Oh, couldn't he be guided into some other channel? Couldn't he be made to see things in the way other people see them? That's Howard's argument. It's fatal. Tony must see things for himself and make his own decisions. Then he'll become somebody. I think that is a thoroughly dangerous argument. Why? What about Picasso and Augustus John? How did they start? Not on walls, I'm quite sure. We don't know. Make him draw the right kind of things. Flowers and vegetables and, and, and dead fish. Still life. He doesn't like still life. He likes animals and people. I should thought it'd be quite easy for you to make him see that the whole anatomy of animals and people isn't meant to go into drawings. Otherwise, what's he a psychiatrist? Darling, don't let's argue about Tony. Very well. But you've met your Waterloo in that child. Hmm. I met it in Howard. Oh dear, still fighting the battle of Waterloo. Darling, you don't mind my not coming up with you today, do you? No, darling, not if you don't want to. After all, it's only fittings again, isn't it? Only fittings. It's her final fitting for her wedding dress. Well, exactly, and as I'm not supposed to see it until the day, there seems very little point in my coming up. Uh, besides, I've got to ring the office and... Never overdo your excuses, my boy. One sufficient. Good one. Oh, Daddy, you might let Tim find out these things for himself. Oh. Don't be scratchy, pet. Familiar symptoms, eve of execution. I think the atmosphere here is just charming. Claire away from her husband and scoffing at marriage and everything it means. Darling, you're not going to the guillotine. If we were, you'll be there with your knitting. Possibly. Where are those children? And what about your train, dear? And you ought to see Howard. I've decided not to interfere. I feel certain Claire can look after herself. There's a lot of dangerous propaganda floating about this household. And I suspect somebody has been studying that Karl Marx Brothers doctrine. Where are those girls? Come along, Joan. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, Phoebe. Look at you in there. No. Alfred, cigars in the morning. I felt like one, so I'm having one. It's very good. In all the 28 years of our married life, you've never done such That's a thing. That's why it's very good. And your train. 
I shall catch the next. Huh. The city of London won't collapse if I'm an hour late. But it's been a lifelong rule of yours. Of yours, my dear. And it's so bad for the morale of your office staff. But very good for mine. <laughs> you said yourself there was a spirit of revolution in the family. Alfred, you're not well. I can see you're not. I never felt better, my dear. I've been thinking of what Claire said on the subject of self-expression. And I agree with her. And if I could draw like Tony, I'd draw you in all your feathers, like a bird on her nest, sitting pretty. <laughs> he's raving. Whatever the germ is that's been brought into this house, he's got it. Well, what's he talking about? All I can say is, thank goodness we're sane. Come along, chicks. We'll never get through the day. You're here, sir. Oh, thanks. You're not ill, are you? Please, sir, that's two minutes fast. Don't you know that you should not attempt to correct your elders? Please, sir, my mummy says, when I say a thing is wrong, I must put it right and not be afraid of anybody. Oh, she does, does she? Please, sir, yes, sir. And that clock is wrong, sir. My watch is never wrong. Please, sir, it must be. My watch is right by the BBC, Paddington Station and Tim. Tim? Whatever next, you miserable little scribe. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, morning, Doctor. Good morning. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello, Tony. I, I didn't expect to see you again so soon. Nor did I, Dad, but I've been sent to... Could me. we be alone? Yes. Of course. Uh, run along, Tony. Go and find Mrs. Smith, and I shall want to see you later. Okey-doke. Okey-doke. As you see, I've brought him back. I can do no more with him. You're, you're not serious, uh, Dr. Bletchley. Not merely serious, Dr. Fleming, but desperate in extremis. Admittedly, your son is a problem, child, but he'll be my problem no longer. Well, this is a very sudden decision, Doctor. I have toyed longingly with the idea for many weeks, Doctor. Yesterday's disaster merely brought matters to a head. Disaster? Disaster. It occurred a bare hour after his return from his half-term holiday, at 7.15 precisely, after his cocoa on the art mistress's study door. What about her study door? He drew on it. Drew on it? That is what I said. He has a diabolical habit of placing on Victoria record everything which attracts his attention. There's not a door or a wall at the school which has escaped him. Well, surely you're exaggerating, Doctor. I beg your pardon. Well, Tony's powers of observation are highly developed. He's rather above average. Above average? He has not the slightest idea of discipline. He seems to be under the impression that he's a law unto himself. An individualist? Yes, sir. And sadly out of place at my school. I've tolerated it too long. Yesterday decided the matter. That drawing. Drawing? Drawing of what? Of whom you mean, don't you? It was a buffoonish caricature of me, sir. And the whole school was laughing at it. Well, I, I seem to remember doing much the same thing myself at his age. Good day, Dr. Fleming. Well, it's a poor schoolmaster who can't direct the natural talents of one small boy. Suppose you have a try. <laughs> Tony, I want you. Tony! Sit down, my boy. Oh, has old Bletchley's gone? Dr. Bletchley has gone. I don't think we shall need these in any case. You know, don't you, that you'll never be able to go back to that school again? Oh, goody, thanks, Dad. Well, I shouldn't be too pleased if I were you. I was never sent away from my school. Oh, did they have schools when you were young? They did, and very good schools, too. There, they taught the boys the things that mattered, like geography and history and arithmetic and spelling. You've done that very well for a boy of your age. They also taught them how to behave and obey. Yes, sir. And if they were naughty, do you know what happened? They had the cane. I know, Dad. I've heard about that. Oh, you have, have you? Yes, Mummy told me. She said that's why all the boys who went to those old schools have grown up so stupid. I see. What do you expect to be when you grow up? An artist. An artist. I'd like to think you were going to be a doctor or a lawyer. Or do the members of those professions strike you as being too stupid? No, Dad. 
Not stupid, only fearfully dull. I think you'd better leave the room before I forget a promise I once made to your mother. Okie doke. By the way, where is Claire? Who? I mean, Mummy. I haven't the remotest idea. Did it disturb you? <laughs> Just a bit. Oh, Timmy, I'm worried. Maybe I was wrong to walk out on Howard. Oh, dear, what do I do? Go back and try again or get to blazes out of it all. Why don't you take a headache powder and lie down? I can't get a clear view of my life. I must stand back and take another look from a distance. If only I could put a few miles between myself and all this. Oh, hop in. Where do you want to go? You mean it? Yes. Right. Ah, breath of fresh air, that's what's needed. Hmm? It's only what Howard's always recommending for all his patients. Jolly good advice. Ah. Hello? Yes, this is the Battleman's maid speaking. Who? Oh, it's you, Doctor. I want to speak to Mrs. Fleming. She's out with Mr. Tim, sir. Out with Mr. Tim? Out where? I don't know, sir. How far are we from London? Let's see, London, New Haven, about 60 miles. Not far enough. Where does that steamer go to? Across the channel, I think. Dieppe. Comes back tonight. Do you want your marriage to go like mine? Hey, now what's up? Do you want to die of apron string strangulation like my father? Because if you do, you drive straight back. I've had it. Hey, Claire, just a minute. Claire! If you want to get off, you might try jumping. It might amuse the passengers. There's going to be a fine row about this. About what? Us pushing off to France together. You could have gone back if you wanted to. And let you go off on your own in your present mood. You're not responsible. You must have been a terrific boy scout. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm beginning to feel human again. Come on, let's have a drink. Good morning, Hello. Pop. Hello, Carlson. Hello, David. Hmm. A bit before your time, aren't you? Uh, oh, just a little, I believe. Uh, usual not, Elsa. No, gin and French, please, a large one. Ooh, you're stepping out of it, aren't you? Uh, in a world of shortages, one should take short drinks. <laughs> gin and French. There you are. Hey. Oh, well, well. Cheers. 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 That's better. Ooh, Mr. Parsons, cigar before lunch? I had one after breakfast. No, what are you <laughs> celebrating? A certain young friend of mine has drawn a horse. Ooh. And I'll have another gin and French. <laughs> now look here, Grace. You tell me that Mrs. Fleming is not at home. Very well, she may be or she may not be. At the earliest possible moment, tell her that I simply must speak to her. You understand? Very good, sir. Who is that? Doctor again. Yes, if he wanted her, he shouldn't have let her go. Is that all there is, cold mutton? That's all. Chicken tonight, though. But what's the good of that? I'm starving. I've been out in the fresh air. Yes, so I can smell. Hmm? The air's very fresh indeed down at the Crown. I don't want any sauce from you, my girl. You just cut me off a nice plate of that cold mutton. Aren't you going to wait for Mrs. Fleming and Mr. Tim? No, why should I? They never wait for me, do they? First come, first serve. That's what I say. Where are the spoons? Aren't there any spoons? There you are, sir. All right, I can see it. Thicker, thicker. All right, sir. I should have dragged you off the beastly boat. <laughs> Take deep and regular breaths. The sea air is worth all the medicine. The next time you and Howard have a ride, try to confine it to the British Isles. Then it'd turn into a world war. Oh, forget it, Timmy. We're nearly there. If you think we're going to get off this boat, you're crazy. We're staying right here till she turns around and goes home. Oh, are we? Yes. Oh. Yes. Caper, no francs. Drinks we can't pay for. Oh, relax. It's good for you. Unties the apron strings. What do you want? 
Ben geldim tabi. Bu kadar böyle böyle mi anne? Stop sulking, have a drink. All right. I'll show them. You keep out of this. Just get that one. You keep your eyes to yourself. Pardon me. You're asking for a sock on the joint. I'm not asking for a sock. 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 I'm not asking for a s
tonight the night bark. There may be trouble, may be violence. Violence? In England? Land of free speech? My dear friend, surely not. Who can tell? Life is so uncertain. I can see it, I can see it. Don't do that, Papa. No. I think I'll ring Howard. Hmm? Whatever for? See if Tim's there. Well, I shouldn't do that if I were you. Oh, but, Mummy, I'm worried. What about? The explanation's perfectly simple. Tim's persuaded Claire to go back to Howard and has driven her back in his car. Yes, I expect that, Tim. Tim and Alfred will come back together, you'll see. They probably met at Howard's and had a glass of wine to celebrate the making up. Then they'll catch a later train. Or they may even now be at the Crown. Though what men see in public houses defeats me utterly. You know, I think I will ring hard. Well, do if you must, dear, but I don't think they'll thank you for interrupting them. They must have a great deal to talk over. I do wish Claire wouldn't take life so scientifically. It isn't as if... They come at last. I knew they would. Off you go, Grace. Ooh, what an action. She'd make a good hurdler. <laughs> oh, good evening, sir. Huh? <laughs> isn't it? Well, Howard, how nice to see you. Where's Claire? Well, that's precisely what I've come to find out. But I thought that Tim had taken her back to you in his car. Well, who told you that? I don't know. Who did, dear? Uh, no one, dear. Oh, but I must have got it from someone. Grace, Grace, didn't you tell me that Mr. Tim had taken Mrs. Dr. Fleming back to Mr. Dr. Fleming? No, madam. I said they'd gone out together in Mr. Tim's car. That's all I said. You're quite sufficient to. All right, Grace, you can go. Yes, sir. A very serious thing has occurred. Tony has been sent away from school. Oh, is that all, dear? Well, there are plenty of others. Near a home, too. There's one called the London School of Economics. That sounds a very nice one. Cheap, too. Uh, yes, that's not the point. He's been sent away because, well, thanks to Claire, he's completely out of hand. He can't go through life like this. He'll end up in jail. And it's our responsibility, Claire's and mine. We've got to face up to that. Now, where the dickens is Claire? She can't walk out on this. Oh, to heck with Claire. What I want to know is where's Tim? Good gracious. What? If Tim didn't take Claire back, where's Alfred? Water Brights. Water Brights. Edie, large gin French and double warrior. No, but it is time for me to go. Goodbye. Thank you. But I know there will be violence tonight. There will be no violence. I am coming with you. Rule Britannia! Rule Britannia! <laughs> of the working man. Think of a nation, a great nation, swimming in alcohol. Lovely grub, eh? <laughs> think, think of the money spent in, in drinks. Friends, water is free. Why don't you drown yourself? Will you please let me explain? Ah, go on, why don't you scarp us? What did Prohibition do? Yes, what did it do? I appeal to you as a British sportsman. Let me speak. Pack it in, chum, you had it. You're mad, run, they will kill you. Order! Order! I do not believe in what this man says, but I defend to the death. It's right to say it. He's pitching Ivan's pitch. Who does he think he is? Good old Ivan. Yeah, yeah what's your idea? Oh. Je t'aime. 
Martin. Oh, je t'adore. Alors, je suis orphelin, vous comprenez Orphelin. Mais écoutez, pas de papa, pas de maman, la vie. Mais père, oui. ma vous avez mon fils, puis je vous donne ma fille. Ah, vous avez raison. Oui, je vous ai raison, mais nous sommes enchantés d'avoir votre fille. Et nous sommes enchantés d'avoir votre fille. Nous sommes, nous sommes enchantés. That's all you know. No, there's nothing more you can do, thank you. Good night. <laughs> Good night. It's Alfred's night watchman. He says everyone left at the usual time. I can't understand. It's never happened before. Since you're giving yourself a breather from that phone, you might give me a bit more chicken. A wing will do. I could do with a parson's nose, too, if nobody else wants it. Why don't you eat up, Molly? You'll get so empty, you'll rattle. Oh, please, Papa. Don't go too fairy-fingered with that, will you, Hart? Supposing we talk over all the things which could have happened. Please excuse me. Perhaps you two would like to take your pudding into the morning room. Uh, you could switch on the radio and listen to special announcements. There might be an SOS. Yes, Auntie. I didn't want to say too much in front of the children, but I don't like the look of things at all. I'm very worried, Howard. Mm, so am I. If Alfred were here, I'd be more worried still. Why? Well, we should know he wasn't with the other two. As it is, there's just a chance they may all three be together, not just those two alone. You're not suggesting that Claire and Tim... Oh, no, Howard, surely not. Well, I'll be frank, I've never quite trusted Tim. Oh, good gracious me. Well, he's a curious sort of chap. He makes light of things. You don't think he'd make light of Claire? Well, in her present mood, she may make light of him. But this psychiatric practice of hers is getting me down. And what's more, she's now developing an hypnotic influence over Tony. Oh, Howard, how disgraceful. And she was so carefully brought up. Yes, well, it has its curative uses, too. I once saw a hypnotist at the old Hoban Empire. Ran the needle right through a woman's arm. Papa, please. Yes, yeah, she must have been a lot tender than this chicken. Now we shall learn something. Never a bit of peace. <laughs> Curse of civilization. Hello? Uh, yes? Oh, yes, Smithy. I've given Master Tony his supper and put him to bed. Poor lamb. He asked for his mummy and he asked for you. When I said you was both away, he said, am I an orphan? <laughs> no, 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 don't carry on like that. He once told me that he wanted to be an orphan so that he could wear a uniform. Because when I get my hands on him, he'll want it more than ever. When you what, sir? Oh, don't say that, sir. You know you wouldn't hurt him. All right, very well. Look, if I'm not back in the morning, phone Dr. Smollett and ask him to carry on. <clears throat> and bring Tony down here to me. All right, thank you. Good night. Well, I've made up my mind how to deal with that young man. I, I don't mind an apple pie bed. But sewing up my pajamas is going just a bit too far. Never mind my promise to Claire. I'm going to give him a darn good hiding. <laughs> They have no report of any accident, but they're trying to trace the car. What irritating people they are. They don't know a thing until somebody reports it. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's quite astonishing what they do know. Especially when one hopes they don't. All we need is for this to get into the papers. Then Alfred will be the talk of London and he'd never ride in the mayoral coach. Well, that won't break his heart. You don't know anything about it. Don't I? I've seen lots of mayors in my day. The man may be the mayor, but it's his wife that wears the harness. <laughs> 
I still stick to my theory that Claire and Tim and Alfred are all together somewhere. Well, why don't they communicate with us? Oh, well, perhaps they can't, dear. Perhaps they're locked in. Locked in where? Or stuck in a lift. I got stuck in a lift once, boat race night. Took two coppers to get me to Vine Street. <laughs> we don't want to hear about that, do we? No, I bet you don't. Might remind you of the time you gave me six months to live, years ago. Oh, what a doctor. Some linger longer than others. What do you mean, linger? I feel all right. Yes, quite possibly you do. You can't find anything wrong with me. Why, you wouldn't know God from chicken pox. Drink plenty of barley water, he says. Alcohol will harden your arteries and shorten your life. Hang it all. They use alcohol to preserve things, don't they? <laughs> well, look at me. I'm well preserved, aren't I? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Mm. There's nothing wrong, is there? No. No, no, no. No, nah, good. Well, a man in your condition shouldn't overeat. In my condition? Show me your tongue. You can put it back now. No wonder. Look here. What do you think I ought to do? See a doctor. Yes. Yes? You have? Where? No, no, wait. Yes? Yes? New Haven? Yes, right, I will. Thank you very much. Good night. Well, now we're beginning to learn things. The police have found Tim's car. Oh, have they really? Oh, where? Left unattended in New Haven, near the harbor. The harbor? Oh, Howard, you don't suppose... Suppose what? They wouldn't all three join hands and jump in, would they? What on earth for? Oh, I don't know, but Alfred's been so strange, and Claire talking in that extraordinary way. But Tim, Tim had everything to live for. I agree. He was the only one not married. I'm going to New Haven immediately. That'll be a telegram. I'll go. Oh, well, what do you want? I come from Mr. Parsons. Yes. I come in. Yes, Thank yes. you. Come along here, quickly. Where is Mr. Parsons? My name is Pshenyinov. I, I spell it to make it clearer. P-S-C-H-A-N-S-C-H-Y-N-O-F-F. -F. My friends call me Ivan. Yes, I, I'm sure they do. But what about Mr. Parsons? We're all in a state of great anxiety. Uh, Mr. Parsons gave me a message for his father-in-law. Well, that's me. What you been up to now, eh? He said for me to see you alone. What? I am Mrs. Parsons, his wife. How do you do? I'm most charmed. Everywhere I go, I meet charming people. M Mr. Schne... Schne... Enough, my friends call me Ivan. Uh, what is this message? We're very concerned. He wants some trousers. Trousers? You see, he can't very well go home without them. He might be arrested again. Again? Well, what's he done with his trousers? Alas. They were torn off. He was debugged. Debugged? Oh, Howard, I can't bear it. Who did such a thing? Man in a scrimmage. I was speaking. He was in the crowd listening. I was shouted down. Oh, Howard. He cried to the crowd. I do not believe in what this man says, but I will defend to the death his right to say it. Voltaire. I never heard such nonsense, never. Madam, I've been arrested in all countries of Europe. No wonder. I come to England. I meet a man who says he will defend to the death my right to speak. Nowhere else has that happened to me. It is unique in my life. He's a great man. He and Voltaire. And now he's at Parker Police Station. I think the charge against him is disturbance of the peace. Howard, I'm sure he was drunk. You must go to the police station and certify that he wasn't. Well, if he was, it's too late. The police surgeon will have seen him. Well, he was going to refuse the evidence of the police surgeon. After all, it's only his word against yours. But if they've already got his evidence, how can I refute it? Nonsense. You can say you represent another school of thought. You say yourself there are always two or three or four. Why, even you and Claire have one each. Yes, but what uh, about the trousers? Miss oh, Papa, go and get a pair of Alfred's trousers quickly. Subdued ones. You bet. You know, I'm beginning to have hopes about Alfred. You'd better have a drink. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What'll you have? Rum, please. Rum is the wine of the warrior. <laughs> well, Mr. Sh Ivan, I think I'll join you. Uh, I couldn't rest, Mummy. Rest? I've forgotten the meaning of the word. Who's that with Howard? The public anarchist. He's come about your father. Why? What's happened to Daddy? He's in prison. Now we're off.
you know I'd like to go with you. It'll be a sight for sore eyes to see Alfred in his cell. Well, I, I think you'd better stay at home with the women. Never, Leslie. But they need a man about the house. Oh, all right. Look, if a message comes for me from Claire, uh, phone me at the Park Street Police Station. Yes, of course. Well, come along, let's get going. Oh, hold those for a moment, Mr. Schnellian, off, will you? <laughs> I nearly got it right. I'll get my overcoat. He doesn't believe in his right to speak, but says he'll defend him to the death. Now, what do you make of that, eh? I don't know. Crackers, of course. I can only see the Lord Mayor's coat empty. Ha, ha, ha. 
Il fait ce chèque, lui, sa femme est partie avec un matelot. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il le fait tous les nuits, sa femme est partie avec un matelot. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait Oh, hello Oh, hello <laughs> Mommy Hello 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 There were shots and tears screamed and told him to stop it, and then more shots and tears screamed again, and then it always did. Yeah, give it to me. Yeah. Hello What was he shooting about? We've got to find out. Hello, exchange. Oh, hello. where is she? Ask him what he was. Don't let him keep all the fun to himself. Oh, really, Grandpa? Oh, hello, exchange. Oh, Howard, get hello. out of here. Oh, it's you again. Uh, you, you know, oh yes, of course. Look, I'm Dr. Fleming. I've brought Mr. Parsons trousers. Oh, yes, sir. I expect he'd be quite pleased to see you. He's in there. Yes. I, I take it there's no charge against Mr. Parsons? Oh, no, 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 sir. We just had to keep him undercover. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, sir. I'm sorry you should find me in these circumstances. Well, never mind about that. Look, uh, slip into these. We've got to get home. Ooh. My wife must never know about this. Oh, yes. Uh, quiet. Yeah, we've no time for explanations now. There's too much going on. What is going on? Uh, Dr. Fleming, I want on the telephone. Telephone? <laughs> is there such a thing? Oh, probably clear. Hello? Hello? Yes? Howard here? Molly's fainted. Well, what about it? Well, she's still out. We just heard from Claire. Stay in France with Tim. Yeah, they've hopped it, done a bunk, both of them. There was a lot of screaming and shooting on the road, and then everything went dead. Sounded like a machine gun battle. I don't know who did who in or why. Regular revolution from the sound of things. I thought you'd like to know. Yes, yes, in France, but where in France? Uh, Dieppe, yes, that's right, Dieppe. Nice little place, Dieppe, Howard. I remember what... Psst, wait. Sergeant. Yes, sir. I want you to help me, if you will. Yes, sir. I want to charter a plane for Dieppe as soon as possible. Bad news, sir. Yes, I think my wife may have been abducted to France by a dangerous criminal. Possibly murdered, Sergeant. Always there is something. Hello. Yes. Howard. New Zealand or how long did By air. But it's vital we should return at once. Yes, sir. If you have not French money, how can I possibly book you seats for England? But he's getting married tomorrow. Ah, madame, I am powerless. I could do nothing, uh, even if he were getting divorced. I suppose we'd have to wait hours for that boat. Journal never stand for it. Well, in that case, it may all be for the best. A fine pal you are. Pardon. Allons, oui. Oui, certainement. Oh, oui, certainement, monsieur, tout de suite. Merci, au revoir. Pardon. Oh, uh, you may be in luck, monsieur. It so happens a charter plane is just coming in from England to land. I will see if I can arrange some. Vive l'homme ton cordial! Pardon. Ça va? 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 Ça Dr. Fleming? Yes? Uh, this gentleman is from the police. We think we have your criminal detained in my office. Oh, good. In there. Right. <laughs> Let me go, you clot. <laughs> Release him, moi, comprenez? Silence. Silence yourself. <laughs> ah, silence. <laughs> ah, here come the Marines. Oh, Thank heaven you're alive. What are you doing here? What do you imagine? I see. Yes, trust your imagination not to let you down. Well, I hope you don't think you're going to get away with this. Listen, Howard, uh, the whole thing is as innocent... Innocent? You must think I'm a lunatic. In spite of that, it's not a bit what you think. Oh, we'll discuss that on the other side of the channel. So this is the man? It is. Now, uh, listen. Hello. You know, this selfish business has gone a bit too far. Yes, Daddy, I know. But it was necessary. Thank you very much. Hola, Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Are you ready to go? Good morning. Monsieur. Monsieur, madame. Vive l'amour. Vive le sport. Ah. Hours have gone by and no news. Mm. Nothing since Howard phoned to say they were going to fly to France. Well, there's nothing in the paper about it. I should hope not indeed. There's always somebody shooting somebody else in France. Oh. Crimes of passion, they call them. <laughs> they wink at Please, it. Papa. Please, Papa. Please, madam, the dresses have arrived for tomorrow. Take them to the morning room, Grace. Yes, madam. Send them back. <laughs> I'm not going to marry Tim, Mummy. I'm going back with Susan and Anne to stay at Aunt Emma's. But you can't do a thing like that, child, on the eve of the wedding. Think of the guests and the presents. Think of me. I have thought of everything, dear, including you. 
I'll see both my daughters married if it's the last thing I ever do. Oh, what now? Oh, Madam, here, here, it's all safe and sound. Oh, Bless you, Mama. Hello, Hello, Here you are. Did they tell you you're going to be page at the wedding tomorrow? That'll be fun, won't it? What's the page? You'll have to carry the train. Oh, goody, I love trains. <laughs> Come along up. I tell you, we got mixed up with this wedding party and spent the day on a pub crawl. That's all there was to it, do you hear? Perfectly, thank you. Then why don't you say something? My vocabulary is too limited. I wouldn't have had it happen for worlds. Don't be so hypocritical. You enjoyed it as much as I did. I cannot see what there is to enjoy in excessive alcoholic indulgence. Quite. Well, I've had the time of my life, and I don't mind admitting it. I'm sorry, Howard, if I've caused you any inconvenience, but I feel as if a gale of fresh air has blown through my soul. It's a pity it had to be a French gale. Oh, by the way, in the midst of our various activities, I omitted to mention one insignificant item. Oh? Perhaps you might be interested to know that Tony has been sent away from school. Who has dared to do a thing like this? His headmaster. He's afraid for his other pupils. <laughs> Won't rest at this. <laughs> How right you are. <laughs> Where is Master Tony? He's upstairs, sir. I don't care what you say, Alfred. It's a shameful time to come home. But we have come home, Molly dear, all of us. Don't talk nonsense, Alfred. Wherever else could you go? What do you mean? And you need try to invent a, an old comrades reunion because I know all about last night. You do? We'll discuss the matter after the wedding. But, John, it's not his fault. No, let me extend. Look, I never want to speak to you again, and I'm not going to marry you ever. Thanks, pal. Thanks for the gale of fresh air. Oh, you wicked old man. Seen Tony? Yeah, playing in the garden, I think. Thank you. You've been good while I've been away. Oh, la la. Polly go from say wee wee. What about yourself, eh? Hello, Susan. Hello, Anne. Hello. I wish someone would say with its off or on. You can say that again. Sorry, kids. Have you seen Tony? No. Seen Tony. That's all this means to her. Oh, well. Perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps she's got the right idea about marriage after all. But, darling, can't you believe that the trip to Dieppe was just a bit of escapism? The fact that we missed the boat was just bad luck. Bad luck for our wedding, Tim. No, it's no use now. We'd never make a girl of it. But surely you don't believe that Claire and I were attracted to each other? Why not? You've known her longer than you have me. Felt a bit guilty about breaking in in an old tradition. That's neither generous nor true. Well, it's the way I feel. But listen, darling, I just took Claire for a drive. Tony! Tony! He's in bed. In bed? Locked in his room. You've been spanking him, haven't you? Yes. A course of treatment long overdue. You promised you'd never lay a finger on him. That was when he was ours. When he's mine, I shall bring him up as I see fit. You haven't got him yet, and you won't. Please get out of my way. I'll leave him alone, or I'll start such a row that they'll hear about it in the next county. You can't do that in my home. I'll do it in the middle of Trafalgar Square, rather than that child shall be spoilt anymore. Sit down. Relax. Relax? Yes. What you're always telling others to do. Darling, when it help if I tell you that I know that you love me? That I know we're going to be married tomorrow? Tim, I'll never marry you. Never, never, never. You're quite sure you won't have a little something? Yes, quite sure. Thank you. Oh, well, please, sir. By the way, uh, remind me to write out a prescription for those nerves of yours. It seems we can never agree about Tony. That is a pity. Mm, quite. I am determined, however, that he shall grow up with a mind of his own and the willpower to use it. I will not have him beaten into a nervous wreck. No. And if you won't let me keep him, I shall divorce you on grounds of cruelty to assault upon our child. How will that suit your practice? Admirably. Claire. Oh, dear. Now, darling, do try not to shake. Remember, there, there are lots of things about you that show the slightest quiver. Your veil and your bouquet. Now, Donna. Now remember, darling, brace yourself and think of Mother. May I come in? I don't want to hurry anyone, but time's getting on. 
Don't agitate, Alfred. And, and Joan Darling, clear your throat before you make the responses. Remember, nobody really cares about husky responses. Oh, well, now, let me see. See you from behind. That's where all the eyes really are. That's, uh, that's huh? Grace. Grace. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Yes, darling, that's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Who? Oh, Tim. Yes, it's Claire speaking. Listen, I forgot to give Joan Mother's pearls. Yes, all that fuss last night. Well, you know how much Mother wanted her to wear them. Well, I'm still at the Crown. Couldn't you pop over and get them? I can't. There isn't time. Can't you send somebody over? Well, if they've all left for church, what about Charles? What are best men for? Oh, no, he's lost his collar stud. He's in an awful flat. Well, we've got to do something. I've got an idea. You run across the field to the old cottage. I'll meet you there in about two minutes. Good, I'll be right over. Oi, you can't go like that. Why not? Well, look. Well, you might have told me. Tony! Please go away, Claire. I'm busy. It's time you were off to church. Just look at you. I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. I'm going to finish my picture. You'll see about that. Here you are. Thank you. Oh, Tony, come here. Look at my cottage. The little blighter. Help me with him, will you? We haven't got much time. Yes. hears about this. You'll make us the laughing stock of the neighborhood. I'll handle this. Tony, stop that immediately and come and open this door. And I'm not afraid of being bullied. You've always told me not to be. Tony! Sorry, Claire. Uh, five pop any good? Hello? Yes, Mr. Parsons here. Oh, yes, Charles? Oh, I, I, I've lost Tim. But he went off to meet Claire. It's nearly time that he was married. I agree. High time. Where's Claire? Hmm? Yes, of course. Where's who? Claire. Where is she? If you don't know, why should I? I must find my wife. I suppose you haven't seen Master Tony, sir. Well, is he missing too? I can't find him anywhere. <laughs> I'm not surprised. What are we going to do? I don't know what to think. Claire and Tim both missing. Surely they haven't gone off together again. I won't believe it. Our daughter shall go to the church come what may. Anne, Susan, quickly. Downstairs, girls, we're leaving at once. Uh, Alfred, keep Joan here till the last possible moment. With the wedding time is everything. You'd better take Howard with you. Howard? Oh, dear, dear. Daddy, I do think we ought to be making a start. Oh, well, plenty of time, darling, plenty of time. But you were also going a minute ago. Yes, I just wanted to get rid of your mother. That's it. I wanted you to myself for a moment. Daddy. <laughs> Tony, open this door. Tony, open this Tony. door. Tony. Master Tony. Smithy. Smithy. Oh. All right, I'm coming. Bless you, Smithy. Run like blazes. I'll get you clean if I have to scrape you. There's something wrong, Daddy. I know there is. You're afraid to tell me. No, no, of course not. No. I can't be going now. The car's waiting. No. Tim forgot these. Oh. You simply must wear them. Oh, thank you, darling. I was beginning to think something had happened. Oh, how I feel, sir. Right? Yes. Here we go. Stop. Just a moment, please. Ah, I think it's better if we have the little man over here. It's quite perfect, don't you think? Now, that's better, isn't it? Still, Dean. Now hold it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I get my hands on him. You're not going to spank him again. Aren't I? No. Hmm? I am. Huh? You don't do it hard enough. 
Huh? Uh, let's talk it over first. Together. <laughs> 